Welcome on board, dear viewers, our esteemed friends and family on call to Activism Africa this Saturday. We are grateful to have you with us and we are going to continue enjoying your presence. We are happy that you follow us and we thank you so much for making the numbers in just a few days we are over 1000 people here and we are grateful we can't thank you enough for showing us all this much love which is making us very excited working with you now that we know that you trust what we do we shall continue serving you much better my name is Kato Mukasa, Ugandan lawyer and humanist, and I do make this possible alongside my dedicated African friend, Linda Tilly. Today, it will be Linda taking us through all that we have to do as we handle this major topic today which is towards the demystification of homosexuality in Africa. We are going to have this topic, as we promised. We have had a number of series on the same topic of homosexuality in Africa. Since we know how challenging it is to be identified as homosexual in Africa, we know many people have lost their lives. We know many people have gone into exiles, uh, exile, and we know that many governments in Africa which hunt people simply because they are gay. We do believe that this is an important topic we are going to handle, which we have already handled, of course, throughout this month, and we shall continue handling until the end of this month. And then we shall be taking in your feedback. I'm happy that tonight we have our host, Linda Tilly, who will also be having guests that will join us along the way. And I'm grateful that you have shown us this love and you continue to support this important movement, this important advocacy call and we shall continue being your partners, working together with you, changing our villages, changing our sub-counties, changing our communities, changing our constituencies, changing our countries, changing our continent, each person doing a small contribution, one day at a time, each person teaching one person. And as we say, each one, Teach one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud of the committed team we have. I'm so proud of the team that we are working together to make these things possible. And I'm so proud that together we are making a difference. We have been talking about the most hard topic in Africa. The topic regarding homosexuality. We all know how hard it is to be identified as a homosexual in Africa. We all know how witch hunt is being promoted in Africa and how homophobia has claimed a number of people in Africa. We therefore want to join voices, to join our efforts together as a team working towards the betterment of our continent to ensure that we work together, to ensure that we sensitize our people to ensure that we be the change that we want to be. Tonight, as I said, 
we shall be having our co-host, Linda TV, taking us through the entire topic. And we shall have a good time listening to her, watching her, together with the people she's going to host today. I do right now take the chance to wait for my colleague, Linda TV, to join us. And I will be happy to hear from you at the end of this talk show. I will be happy to get your comments. Please go down there on the link on this very screen and send your question or comments. And we shall be extremely happy. I want to thank so much all the Africans, and when I say Africans, I mean all humanity, black, white, yellow, brown, we are all Africans. I want to thank all people across the world that have shown lots of love to this platform, that within three weeks, we have over, I want to thank you so much for sending WhatsApp messages to me and to our team and promise you that we are going to have a WhatsApp group, whether we shall be 1,000 or 100,000 on it. And on this WhatsApp group, we shall be able to discuss matters about Africa, matters that will take our continent forward. And from those discussions, we shall be able to select topics that can be discussed here each week. So I want to assure you, our dear viewers, I want to assure you that we shall be inviting you, we shall be accepting your invitations, we shall be taking your requests to join our WhatsApp group through which we shall continue this conversation and more future conversations to enable you talk with us, share with us, be part of this team. Welcome again. Welcome again. Welcome again to this lovely family of Call to Activism Africa with my lovely friend, Linda Tilly, and with all the team we work with, the team that includes Dennis and Mehdi in Uganda, Logan and Ahmad in South Africa, and all the silent supporters we have and all the wonderful team we have. We pledge our commitment and we pledge our continued dedication. We are going to discuss all matters impossible with this team. There is no subject too hard to define and discuss with our team. There is no topic too hard to dissect and handle. We are going to discuss everything from politics to religion, from commerce to sexuality, to social affairs, to things that you think are impossible. We are going to discuss all the things. All the things are going to be discussed and we shall handle each one at a time. At the beginning of this episode, at the beginning of this talk show and court activism, we did promise that we are going to be handling all tough topics. And here is the chance to do that. We have handled homosexuality. We have defined it hardest subject on the continent. We do not care 
what the stereotypes are. Our interest is to bring matters hard to discuss to the fore. We shall discuss African dictators. We shall discuss imperialism. We shall discuss neo-imperialism. We shall discuss colonialism. We shall discuss neo-colonialism. We shall handle the history of our lovely continent. We shall show the exploiters, people who have stolen from our continent, people who have enriched themselves from our continent. We shall expose all the wrongs, but also we shall expose our weaknesses and we shall find a way forward as a collective. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want a platform that is going to discuss everything, that is, won't leave any stone unturned, this is your platform. This is the best platform ever. Call to Activism Africa is that platform that is going to discuss everything undiscussed, whether it's a matter of sexual rights, whether it's abortion or death penalty, and Linda is going to take the lead as I take my exit and I take a sip on my glass of water. We shall be having Linda today discussing this important subject with us. Hi, good evening, everybody. Kata, thank you for that introduction. I'm sorry we've had a few technical hiccups. We're going to be, from next week, we're going to be on StreamYard, which will be a lot easier. We're going to pre-record the shows, um, and they'll be pre-edited before they are put on the Facebook page. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I know Kato reiterated that earlier, is that um, we've had an incredible amount of support in just the two shows that we've done so far. I think we've got well over a 1, thousand, 1,200 uh, subscribers so far. And homosexuality is not an easy topic. A lot of people don't really uh, want to watch shows to do with it. Um, and it's just one of the top, many, many topics that we're going to be covering about Africa. Um, so I think that we are going to, we really have a fantastic response so far. So thank you, all of you from across Africa. I know Kato's uh, WhatsApp number has been inundated with messages from people across Africa as well uh, this week. So we're going to be getting all our technical issues sorted out. Um, so today, as you know, we are doing, for those of you who haven't watched before, we are covering topics in Africa that affect all of us. And we chose homosexuality as our first topic, which all the subjects that we have to discuss are such big topics that we've realized that we can't just have them in one show. We also want to get guest speakers from around Africa to join us on various shows. This month we are running a series on homosexuality in Africa and then every month thereafter we're going to be discussing different issues. Uh, religion in Africa, the African education system, the theft of our mineral reserves by the West um, and all sorts of things, our, our, our hidden history. Um, because the history books that are out there are all incorrect. They've been written um, only from one side, and we, we now know our um, true history. Um, all to do with our artifacts, cultural beliefs in Africa, the slave trade, and of course the state that we are all in today with our dictatorship governments that continue with the West to keep us oppressed and reliant on, on aid um, and enable us to think that we are not as good and that we are destined to a life of poverty and war when we aren't and it's just also to unite us all as African people to realize that we actually share the same issues in each country but we don't know it because we don't talk to each other because we have been conditioned to see our neighbors as foreigners and our neighbours are actually our friends and part of our family. They're not foreigners at all. And unfortunately, because of this, most Africans are forced to flee to foreign lands for exile and asylum um, because we, we hate each other and we don't want each other. In our countries in Africa, we have to, our own people have to flee overseas. And if they can't 
they normally killed if they stand up for their rights. So one of the big things we face in Africa is the discrimination against homosexual people. Now, I'm talking tonight about when I'm, it's an umbrella word, I'm talking about lesbians, gays, transgender, and bisexual people, all people who do not have what follows the traditional religious image of a man and a woman having children together and settling down and living happily ever after. The first show we did, we have actually covered quite a lot for those of you who please go back and watch the shows we've done so far because there's a lot of information there and also articles that we've put onto Facebook, is that there is a common misconception that homosexuality is something that was brought to Africa by the West. Um, when homosexuality has always been part of our culture as Africans and it was one of the things that the colonialists and the slave traders took away from us as another means, another tool to break up our unity. So we have written a lot and spoken a lot about that. Um, Beryl is going to be joining us on the show later from Kenya and also giving us some insight into that um, and what she studied as well um, and what she's studying at the moment about that as, as proof for people to see that, uh, you know, it's not a Western practice that was introduced here at all. So tonight we're going to be discussing the social aspects of homosexuality, the myths around homosexuality, and the challenge faced by homosexuals on our continent, and then also how we can support them in Africa. And I just, I'm going to, we're running a little bit late, so I'll try and, I'm going to try and keep within the times here. Um, I'm going to discuss the first two topics, and then Beryl will come on and join us, and then I will finish off with my last two topics. I might repeat a little bit for just to explain things that what some of you might have already uh, watched previously. But I'm going to start now, and I've just got some notes here, with the social aspects of homosexuality. And I'm trying to just um, look outside the normal things that, that people think of when they discriminate against homosexual people. And I've, what I've done for this, because I'm the kind of person that I base everything that I do on facts, and not just on facts that I read online, but actually speaking to real people and finding out the real story behind things that I'm told. So I've taken a combination of that with many, and I'm going to use the word homosexuals tonight just for shortness, but I'm talking about everybody that fits under that category that I just spoke about now. Um, I've gone online, and as we know, we're very backward in Africa with our acceptance of homosexuals. So there's no ways we have big research facilities and things set up at the moment um, to discover things about homosexual people. So I've had to go for all my information and facts tonight from various universities and studies that have been done in Australia, America and the UK, uh, where there are actually dedicated teams of people that study homosexuality and try to um, understand it better. So these are factual things which I will write an article after the show and provide links so people can check for themselves. So first of all, the stigma and discrimination that affects all homosexual people. This takes a huge toll on them, their mental health. We all go through times in life where we suffer and we go through maybe a little bit of depression or I think especially as an adolescent when you're going through puberty, you have peer pressure, you're finding your way in the world. That is a lot, time where a lot of people, um, children, adolescents go into phases where they perhaps start turning to substance abuse and things like that. Um, they have to keep up with their friends and we never used to have that much in Africa, but I see now with my own children how it's coming into the schools and that here, where it's very much having the latest designer clothing and, and that kind of thing. Um, and it's quite sad to see how priorities change with, in a very short period of time. So a lot of gay people, everyone is born the way they are, so gay people are born gay. And by the time they reach adolescence, like all of us as straight people, um, like I'm a straight person, you, I didn't, you don't think much of boys when you're a child, the opposite sex, and then when you go through puberty and adolescence, you become physically and sexually attracted to the opposite sex. 
So this is often when we all discover our sexuality and our sexual orientation. When gay uh, homosexual people have the hardest time because it's at a time in their lives when they are struggling as it is as teenagers and now they've got these conflicting. They, they have a, the whole social aspect and the way that they're raised, especially religious in the religious way, is that it's wrong to love someone or to be sexually attracted to someone of the same sex as you. So they can't talk to anyone about this and they suppress it and they keep it in, in their selves. And with the peer pressure, with keeping up and having a boyfriend or having a girlfriend, and a lot of them suppress it for a long time. And most of my homosexual friends have all been married and had children with opposite sex partners um, and have eventually, through time, or they've gone overseas where they can be freer, been able to be who they really truly are. Some people never are, they always lead double lives. So I think we're all aware of the stigma and discrimination that homosexual people face. It, it puts a huge strain on them with their mental health and there have been obviously incidents where there is a lot of perhaps substance or alcohol abuse amongst homosexual people as they go through the stage. It's been proven to affect young people more than it affects older people, obviously because we're still learning coping skills at that age. So the Beyond Blue organization in Australia has published results of these um, tests they've done over the years, and they say that the prejudice acts, um, adds an extra risk of depression and anxiety, and not only with substance abuse, but with many, many people who commit suicide. Now, Last year we had a discussion amongst many of our humanist groups across Africa and I, which I just asked a question of each of the leaders of those groups and a lot of them deal with, they work in orphanages, they, they teach their own schools and I asked them, we were talking about suicides in Africa and we have suicides in all our countries and the one thing that, that stood out for us is that it's mostly boys, it's mostly young boys that are committing suicide which also brought us to the whole question that are we doing enough for boys on our continent? We're doing a lot for girls with women's rights and women's empowerment and um, menstrual hygiene and reproductive health and contraception and women having a voice, but are we doing enough for our boys? And I do wonder how many of our boys who are committing suicide are actually homosexuals who just can't cope with how they feel and how they've been what pigeonhole they've been pushed into and they commit suicide because of this and I think that's something that we also need to consider as we go forward with projects and that on our continent is that we do need to provide more mental health help and support for the boys because the boys are getting left behind and and the boys are just as important as the women and we mustn't let this whole um, female power thing override especially boys who perhaps are homosexual and are already being teased because of their orientation and now they've got all this outside pressure and it's all about the women and the girls and I, I think that's something that we need to take into consideration as well. Um, it's really just becoming aware of issues and people's feelings around us despite what we personally feel about things. So puberty is when same-sex attraction starts uh, with most homosexual people that perhaps have um, not thought much about it up until then, according to these surveys. Um, and they do find that as time goes on, men somehow find it easier to suppress or hide. Surprising me, you would think. Um, that it would, and, and women are the ones that really suffer. And I find that interesting because... As a woman, I guess, you, you hide a lot, often your emotions, and you as a mother, as a wife, you learn how to control a lot of that. Um, and men are very more close and reserved than women. So it's interesting that the women are the ones, maybe because they do internalize it more. So I'd be interested to get feedback. Um, Beryl, maybe later on in the show, you can also explain about that from a woman's perspective. Um, and then the younger are obviously at risk, and uh, more at risk than the older. And what the Beyond Blue organizations say to people is, we've got to stop, think, and respect. That's their sort of motto. Stop, think, respect. It's what I always say, just because somebody is different to you, they worship a different god, or they don't have a god, or they're from a different race, or culture, or tribe, or different sexual orientation, it doesn't mean that being different 
is wrong. It just means there's lots of different people and we all have different things to add to this world. And as my mother always used to say, it would be boring if we were all the same. It makes lots of people make the world go around. So let's just stop and think before you discriminate against a homosexual person in the future. What they really are going through, you, you, know, you don't know what they're going through. And just try and maybe put yourself in their shoes if it was the other way around. If you were condemned for being a straight person, if it was wrong for you as a woman to be attracted to men and wrong for you as a man to be attracted to women and, and you had to fight that your whole life. That is exactly what gay people go through. Um, it's the way they are born, just like you or I are born straight or homosexual. It's, it's biologically proven and that's just the way it is. Um, they've also been with the social aspects. They've, sorry, I'm just trying to talk a bit slower. I've been told to, to slow down. Um, jobs. There's documented evidence of discrimination in the workplaces. I, I know that also from my, my homosexual friends. And certain stigmas attached. For some reason, there seems to be an idea that if you're gay, you can't, um, it's not good if you're a teacher or you're around children. Um, and also in military and the police, it's not seen as being a good thing for a woman or a man to, to be in the military or police. And then to rise up the ranks, to become a leader, to lead people into combat and things like that. Which is also completely incorrect. There have actually been, uh, hello, Rob's from Uganda and hello, Abraham from Uganda in exile in another country at the moment. Hi guys, nice to have you on the show. Um, so yes, the School of Law, the University of California School of Law, has actually um, also done some studies where they've uncovered similar things. Okay, so now um, a lot of the myths and challenges and things are, are similar. Um, so I discussed at the beginning of the show about the fact that it's not a Western um, homosexuality. is not something that was given to us by the Europeans. It's not a Western thing. It's very much an African thing. You can look back on the show, the first show we did, and also on articles on the Facebook page, where there are documented um, histories of homosexual people in Africa. And I think, I would imagine, our natural um, system of belief with that, most babies were born and allowed to become who they wanted to be. And gender was only really assigned um, at the age of like 17, 18, um, People experimented sexually with both both um, males and females and decided who they wanted to be. And there was almost a third gender that was identified in Africa. Um, there was even talk when the colonialists came and put the laws in place of some people were saying you must have a, a clause in the laws that allow these this third gender of person to just still be able to get married in that. But of course that was written out. And another thing I've touched on before is that if the colonialists had to put all these laws in across Africa, how could that have been if they introduced this to the continent? Surely they would not have wanted laws put into place, and surely it wouldn't have been so prevalent so quickly that they had to put the laws in place. So it was always here. Um, there's also this misconception that gay people molest children um, and are more likely to, to rape people and to commit crimes um, um, homicides and things and that has also been disputed there have been lots of studies done on this most uh, mostly um, by lots of individuals and lots of well-known organizations Paul Cameron is a psychiatrist um, he's completely discredited that gays molest or kill more so than heterosexual people and straight people um, the USA American Psychiatrist Association has also done studies um, They've done studies of children who have been who have been sexually molested, and they have said that it's an even ratio, or and more so even in a heterosexual um, family. There is no statistics to say that children are molested mostly by homosexual people. This is a misconception, and it's like one of these things, like with everything with the media, one or two people start all these one or two incidents. And it just takes off and then it becomes fact. And that's another thing. I just 
really wish that people would would stop and just please don't believe everything you read and take it as the law and facts until you've checked yourselves and that is a problem where we we go wrong in Africa we all do that I also do that we have to be very cautious because you can cause a lot of damage that way so these have been tests as I say it's not just one child they've run them over the years in different situations different socio-economic groups different races different um, periods that people have, have been openly gay and they have found that there is no there are no statistics that show I'm not saying that that um, homosexual people don't commit crimes um, but it's like every race every country every gender has their, their good and their bad and and yes but there's definitely not a spike with with gay people committing these crimes um, there was another man, oh, Nicholas Groth, he is a pioneer in the field study of sexual abuse in children. And he has also studied this um, with his own patients and, and wider studies um, across America. And he has said from a, an adult um, sexually abusing a child's perspective, the majority of offenders, of men and women sexually abusing children, are in adult heterosexual relationships, which means that there's a much higher chance of you of a child being molested by a, a straight or straight man or woman who is a married in a typical relationship of man woman. So that was um, a very important information I think for us all to take note of there. Is that it's mostly, and as we know, uh, it's mostly they say someone that you know, it's an uncle or a friend or a, a brother. And yes, we do know that there are people who have been sexually abused when they were children, but like say a little boy by a man who, who does grow up to, to become gay. But you must understand he has always been gay. There are just as many documented cases of children being raped or molested by same-sex adults that have not become not have become gay because they can't become gay you either are or you aren't so if we break that down and you look at the actual statistics you can see that there's no way you can say that that every gay person who's ever been raped is gay because they were raped by a same-sex person it's not it's there's a mix between the, the, the two um so that's quite important and then um the other misconception is that gay parents will um, abuse their children, sexually abuse their children. Um, and this has also been completely disputed. I know in many countries you can't, I don't think it, I don't think in any of our African countries you can adopt, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I should have actually looked this up. I don't know if same-sex couples here can adopt children, um, which is very, very sad because we have so many children that need homes, but it's highly unlikely that same-sex parents harm their children. And that is from the American Academy of Child and Adolescence, psych psychiatrists, and also with the, the USA Psychiatrists Association, and individual tests that have been done by people. This Nicholas Groth as well. There is absolutely no, no indication that parents love their children, especially if you are adopting a child. It means you can't have children of your own. You are so focused and really 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 want to be a parent why on earth would you go and molest and harm that child or be cruel to the child um aside from the sexual abuse just being mean to the child and and, and hitting and physical abuse it just it just doesn't happen so we need to really really just reconsider things as well because there are lots and lots of homosexual couples across africa who would love to have children and can't have children and there are lots and lots of children that desperately need homes and can be raised in loving homes by two moms or two dads and still grow up to be wonderful people um, without any like trauma or anything because they don't have a parents of each gender raising them. Um, so the other misconception, I didn't know this, is that there's apparently a, a thought that uh, homosexual people don't have long lifespans, as long a lifespan as 
heterosexual people. I can imagine this is probably being put out as fake information by people trying to suppress it. Like, ooh, one of the th reasons why you can't be that way is because you're going to die much younger than you would if you don't do that sort of thing. Um, I think we just have to stop seeing homosexuality. Um, people speak about it and treat people who are homosexual almost like it's a disease, like a terminal cancer or disease. It's like Oh, we don't want them near our children. Oh, we don't want to mix with them. Oh, we don't want to live near them. Oh, work with them. Um, oh, they die young. <laughs> Homosexuals are normal people, just like you and I. It's not a disease. It's not something that people can catch, and it's not something that can be cured. It's part of what makes you up as a person, and it's part of who we've always been as African people. So... Um, there have also been lots of studies done by the Association of Gay and Lesbian Psychiatrists. Now, I just had to take a step back when I was doing this research because I thought, there's a whole association in America that just has gay and lesbian psychiatrists on its board. And they only, obviously, um, well, I don't only deal, but they mostly, if you are gay or lesbian, you can go and that's a psychiatrist. You go to just like there are doctors you you go to that will understand you better than, than a straight doctor. Or, and I, I just think that's amazing. If you think how far behind we are with this and our antiquated laws, that the day will come when, I don't know, it certainly won't be in my lifetime, that we have an association, associ an Africa-wide association of gay and lesbian psychiatrists. Can you imagine it? Where every single homosexual person has a psychiatrist that they can talk to that doesn't deal with straight people at all. And that just shows you how, how we are being left behind. And we are being left behind for a reason. And we've got to all catch a wake up and get with the program. Right. So... We can say from that, and Aunt Beryl is going to be coming on in about five minutes. I know we're running a little bit late. Um, Beryl is a, a wonderful, wonderful um, woman that I've recently, um, I think last year, met uh, from Kenya. Um, I am, I've spent most of my adult life in East Africa, in, in Tanzania. Um, so the Kenyan, Ugandan and Tanzanian people are very close to my heart. I always say that um, they are my tribe, <laughs> the East African people, and I I have a wonderful friend there, uh, Dan Odiambo, and it was through him that I met Beryl. And Beryl is um, a co-founder of a wonderful organization in Kenya. She's doing so much wonderful work there um, with the Moonlight community, and Beryl has had the most incredible journey, and she is a phenomenal um strong, outspoken, uh, brave woman who's been through a lot in her life and has just risen through that. And I think I there was something recently on, on your page, Beryl, where somebody, or you had mentioned to me that um, Beryl was teaching, that parents or someone had said that they don't want her around their children. And I was saying, she's just the kind of person I would love to have, um, especially for a, a teacher for my own daughter, um, as, a, as a role model. So we, we discount a lot of people that have a lot to offer because of prejudice we have against their sexual orientation, which at the end of the day has got absolutely nothing. It's nobody's business how people choose to love and what they choose to do. Um, just like you wouldn't like it if people um, judged you for who you chose to love and have sex with or have a long-term relationship with. Um, Gay people don't affect you personally. They don't, they don't physically cause trauma in your life. It's just the thought of them that causes you trauma. The biggest problem we have with homosexuality in Africa is the people, mostly religious I have to say, who discriminate against it for no valid reason, but just for the fact that they've been told it's wrong. And we've got to start thinking. You can't just judge someone. And unfortunately... The people that are doing a lot of wrong in Africa sorry, are the ones that we just let carry on ruling us and, and, and making the laws and killing and imprisoning those of us who, who are good people. But yet the good people, like the barrels of, of the, this world of Africa, are the ones that are discriminated against. So it's very, very topsy-turvy, upside down. And we really have to start taking a good look at how we view people and realize that 
there's very few good people and we all have to stand together. Those of us like-minded people, we need to stand together and support each other more. So, um, I have covered just about everything for those first two topics. I'm waiting for Beryl to send a request to join us. We have had some problems with our connections. Sorry, I'm holding this thing up all the time. I don't know if you can hear me. Is my sound still okay when I'm talking like this? I just have to hold it up the whole time. So we just wait for Beryl to come online. Um, and while I wait for her request, sorry, I'm a bit new tonight. I'm not. Um, I just wanted to say, yes, please go back. We, what we want to try and do with all the topics that we discuss, we would like to get people from across Africa joining us. Um, we are united. A lot of us are, were, have been working together for a while in various countries. But I find that our little country circle has kind of stopped now. We've got Kenya, Tanzania, um, Uganda, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Ghana. And that's kind of where we've stopped. And we've got Liberia as well. But Liberia, I mean Liberia, many of us don't even think of Liberia as being an African country. And it is. And Liberia is a country that was never colonized by the British. It was colonized by the Americans. And the Americans, um, it was the first return of slaves to our continent. Um, the descendants of slaves were, were brought back to what is called Liberia. It was land that the Americans bought um, that isn't actually true Liberians' land. Um, many of them are from, they don't know where they're from because they, their ancestors were all taken as slaves and they were returned, right, this is your chunk of land, this is where you're going to resettle. Um, so we do have, but not a lot of people in Liberia, but um, and they are very much where is on this side of the continent. It's all very you can see with our education systems and our roads and our legal systems. It's all very much based on the UK way of doing things. What side of the road you drive on, and that in Liberia it's the opposite. And my my black African Liberian friends speak with American accents when they speak English which they don't realize they do. Um, it's very interesting how you can pick up with the accents as well. Um, but people say I sound British. I, I have a 100% government, African government education. I don't have any, any fancy private schooling or university degrees or anything. I'm 100% African government educated. Um, and obviously I was born during the area era of colonial terrorism. So I was raised in British schools. As a white, I was put in the privileged schools. Um, and unlike my, my black friends who were put into the church schools and into rural area, the schools with very bad education systems and that, that's something we'll also touch on. Um, and then of course, I can hear when you hear a bit of French or you hear a bit of, uh, in, an, in a, a black African speaking English, you'll know, or the a bit of German underlying, whether they are from the Congo, my Nigerian friends, other Nigerians have got the most gorgeous accents on our whole continent, I have to say that. The men and the women have got, the, every single one of them has got just these gorgeous, sexy accents, and uh, it's just, uh, you can pick a Nigerian's voice out of a crowd of people. So, how did I get onto the topic of that? Okay, Beryl, so um, I don't know if you're having problems connecting with us or not. Okay, let's just see. I know I wanted to say hello to everybody who I know has been watching us. We don't have many people watching during the live shows, but we have an incredible number of people. We've got a lot of videos on the channel, on the Facebook channel, that you must please go and have a look at. They deal with a lot of current topics and issues that we're dealing with in Africa. Um, and up-to-date news of things that are happening in various countries um, like Uganda and Nigeria. Oh, I didn't mention Nigeria in our whole thing before with a group of countries that are together. Nigeria, Uganda um, are very, very uh, united as in the support of each other, which is wonderful. And I, as a Zimbabwean in South Africa, am, am trying to get a lot of uh, support here for for Nigerian people, um, especially with their elections next year, because Nigeria is, is our most important country in Africa. 
and whatever happens there is an indication of what we all face. So um, it's wonderful to see. Um, unfortunately, we have horrific um, cases in South Africa of xenophobia at the moment, but that's all politically motivated. Um, that I'm also trying to, to stand up against. Um, it's mostly targeted towards um, the Nigerian people. And Nigeria was the one country that supported Africa through apartheid, one, the first part of apartheid. Um, I call it apartheid one because um, it's, we, South Africa is still ruled and the apartheid is still here, it's just hidden. It's apartheid two, I refer to this. It's a more advanced level of apartheid, but it is 100% apartheid. It's not, none of the South Africans have their land back yet and their children are forced to go to school and learn Afrikaans, which is the colonial, um, Brudabant Afrikaans, a uh, tool of oppression um, in the schools. They've brought in other languages now, but it's very, it's nothing, it's very iffy, it's not like, it's um, just to keep people happy on the surface. Okay, Beryl, I think that what I'll do is I will carry on talking now, and then if you um, can join, I'm going to just check my phone to see if Beryl sent me a message. Sorry, guys. Okay, Beryl can't see me. I'm here, Beryl. Okay, that's a message I sent half an hour ago. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I'm not as, as smooth with this whole thing as my wonderful co-host and friend and brother, Kato. Um, but there you go. I'm just going to carry on waffling on. Anyone who knows me or knows my voice knows. No, I can talk for days. I can talk the hind legs of the donkey. That's what I was always told growing up. And I haven't stopped since. Right. Okay, so... I am going to be talking next about the challenges. Hello, Beryl. Yeah. Hi, Beryl. Oh, great. Beryl's with us. Beryl, on your screen, you should see there's a little green man or a little thing that says request to join the live chat. If you just press that, then I will see your um, request and then I will accept it. And then you will get a, a request on your screen to say, do you want to go live just with your voice or your... Video, video please, want to see your lovely face, and then you should should be on. So let's just wait and see how you're going there with that. Um, it's fine, it's all, this is why we've decided we are going to be doing live streaming, and um, we're not, we're going to be pre-recording our shows in future. We will probably still have a few live shows. Also with the StreamYard, we can have um, lots of guests, so Kato and I can be on at the same time, and we can have a couple of guests. It's also going to be more um, of like a TV show format where we're going to have um, graphics. So when we're talking about something, you can see it on the screen. And in between each section, we will have little um, videos and things and music. Uh, I've, anyone want to do a theme song for us? Does anyone want to come up? Any of you musicians out there, African musicians? Maybe come up with a the little theme song that we can have as our theme. I just thought of that now, Keta, and I just wanted to say thank you as well. I don't think people realise how many pe how much work goes into putting together one of these shows because we are trying to have a really really well researched show um, with factual evidence and lots of interesting speakers from around Africa, um, and we hope one day obviously to get sponsorship so that we can take this further um, and reach a wider audience. But for now, we have uh, two people that work on our team are in exile or seeking asylum in other countries that have been chased out of their own countries. Uh, we represent Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Uganda. Um, we have four Ugandans, a Zimbabwean and a South African, and we work across three, three countries and two continents to put the show together. Um, one of us is in, in exile overseas in the UK, and then the rest of us are on the African continent. Some of us are in South Africa. Uh, none of us are where we should be. And then we've got two Ugandans in Uganda um, who do the most amazing work behind the scenes with all the videos and the editing and everything during the week and planning the shows and putting, they, they are tech people and they, they've got all that stuff um, they help us with all that side of things. Um, 
and those are obviously I'm very nervous. Maddie, I know you don't mind me mentioning your name, but the other person, let's just say D. Um, I'm very uh, cautious about protecting the identities of all my friends and people that I work with um, closely in Uganda and in Nigeria um, because of, of issues, as we know, that we have in all our countries, but the, those of us who are very close, we know exactly what's going on in each of our countries. Um, Kenya as well also has a lot of issues at the moment. Beryl, hello, I can see you. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm going to check my phone again, sorry guys, my, uh, my daughter, uh, sorry, my daughter is the South African, <laughs> she is, she, I had to have her in South Africa, I was living in East Africa at the time, and she is actually um, helping a lot with the videos and things, and she's not feeling well tonight, she's been quite a bit sick, so she normally helps me from the side, and Abraham also, um, my Ugandan friend is here too, so... Uh, I can see you and hear you. Can't see the green button to send the request. Okay. I don't see that. Sorry. I'm just looking at Beryl's screen here. I'm going to just ask my daughter. Sorry. Abraham, would you mind asking Logan to come so she can talk to Beryl? Beryl, I'm going to get my daughter to speak to you on my phone so that she can help you. Can you just say, would you mind? Thanks, Juana. Beryl, my guest from uh, Kenya, she can't get online. Can Logan help? Okay, I'm going to see if we can, uh, my daughter's going to see how she can help you. So she will be messaging you on WhatsApp from my number. Abraham's just taking her the phone now. Thanks, Beryl. So please, all the LGBT groups around Africa, it would be wonderful if you could just send us a message, even if it's just to say hello, so that you can all start connecting. Um, all facing the same issues in many of our countries and we we need to stand up I don't think we can see ourselves each country as being an island when we all have the same issues if there are strict new laws that are being written into certain countries all the countries need to stand up with that country against them uh, as we did recently when Malawi were trying to introduce these antiquated laws um, witchcraft laws and and there were several countries that also um, voiced their displeasure at that um, because we know as well that if we allow these ridiculous laws to go through in one country they'll soon be acceptable in other countries as well and what we find is that most of our laws are, are putting us further backwards and not forwards uh, as, as other countries become freer with the LGBT laws for example we are having terrible laws put into place in Places like Uganda and Kenya, where people are imprisoned, or, or um, it, well, in Nigeria, you, you you will just straight be beheaded, and it will be fine, acceptable, because it's it's the whole religious aspect. People really, really, South Africa is seen as having the freest, um, most wonderful laws in place. But as I've said to you many times, well, I've said to people and on the show before is that our constitutions, as we all know, and our laws and how things are supposed to go, like human rights and that, are just words on paper which our governments put into place to appease um, international uh, investors and to tourism and funding for our countries because, it, you know, we, we tick all the boxes on paper. But when it comes down to real life in each of our countries, it's very different. We do know that. Um, and we've all got to start standing up and learning that we can stand up for our rights and we have to start standing up for our rights against things and we have to start standing up for each other because we are all facing huge issues, um, the exact same issues and we would be so much stronger if we had voices from other countries standing by us. Um, like I said with South Africa, yes it is in that you can be openly gay here but there is still a lot of discrimination. I'm hoping to have someone on the show next week who's involved with the LGBT community here in South Africa. And they are doing a lot of um, education in the school system, which is very important, I feel, to start with our children and with the examples that we set um, as, as children and I, uh, to our own children. And I also think that something we don't consider is that, Beryl, you can also, because um, I know you're a mother, 
Oh, I think you're a mother, because <laughs> I see you've got lots of lovely photos of your kids and, and your partner on your Facebook, um, is that how do we also protect the children that are being raised by same-sex parents from being discriminated against um, at school? Because that's very unfair that adults teach their children a bias. And it's like in South Africa, where I see, I was horrified after being living away for 14 years, coming back and seeing that apartheid is just, it's actually even worse than it was. Uh, it's more its its more ingrained than it was when I lived here many, many years ago and I was standing up then during apartheid for black rights. I never thought I'd still be doing it all these years later. And the racism in the schools and the racial slurs that come out of the mouths of even preschool children horrified me. And a child does not know that, that bias. It, it's being taught. It's being carried down through each generation like a terminal illness, like a cancer. And it's slowly, slowly taking taking over. It's, it's awful. It really is. And, and I, having raised my children and my daughter was older, to see everybody as equal. I mean, I have, I have seen the trauma that my children have gone through from being discriminated against because they openly accept all races. Yeah, so it's been, it's been a journey. It's almost like it, I don't know how many white people have been in that situation where their children are being discriminated against by other white children because they are accepting of all people. And it's not just the children, it's the teachers, it's everything. Um, it's hugely ingrained in South African schools, racism, and the kind of racism here. Yeah, I've lived in several African countries and travelled through many and worked in many. And I can honestly say, hands down, South Africa is the worst, worst, worst with racism. Like, it's nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it anywhere else on earth, I don't think. Beryl, okay. Um, my daughter's here now. Have you chatted to Beryl on my phone? Uh, she can't join because she has Facebook Live, so she's going to try something else. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. Beryl, you know what? Don't stress because we can always chat to you next week. It's not a problem at all. Um, it's really fine. Don't worry about it. Um, because I've been yak, yak, yakking away now and we've got 20 minutes of the show left. So don't, don't stress about it, Beryl, really. Um, we're going to be doing StreamYard as well for next week. So we can pre-record pre a segment with you. Um, so don't worry about that now. Okay, so I have touched on one of the topics. Thanks, love. One of the topics that I wanted to well, edit that out in the morning. Shame. My daughter Logan spent hours and hours and hours editing, editing hours, out little bits from the videos. Shame. She hears my voice all day long. Sick and tired of it, and then she's got to edit, edit me all the time as well. Okay, so now. I have discussed the support network that we need throughout Africa. And I'm asking any of you who are part of an LGBT group. Give us your name, we're gonna put them all underneath the post and we'll have a permanent link to those. So that we can start connecting LGBT groups throughout Africa um, together. And you know, sometimes it helps just having someone to, to talk to. I found um, for myself personally, I'm, uh, I am an atheist. Um, so I was a Christian for 25 years. I've been an atheist for about 25 years as well now. So I found myself very excluded and um, not fitting in with any communities as a godless person and, and judged. And I, I found a community of people online um, who were exactly like me and accepted me for who I was. And I, I think that it's the same for the LGBT community. You're very isolated in your countries, all of us. and. If you can just meet with like-minded communities and like-minded people and forums and people, you can build a support network. It helped me deal with the day-to-day -day life with religion all around me, um, knowing that I had like a safe sanctuary that I could go to and friends that really understood me and, and um, knew exactly what I was going through because they were going through the same things. And we've built a very strong community, a network of people that has extended way beyond the the religious aspect into the ways we support each other um, as African people, as godless Africans, and in the same breath that we, with Christian and, and Muslim and, and all um, 
religions, Hindus, you know, we, we accept everybody for who they are. We work, we work in human rights with all those groups, not just exclusively atheists. And also just not, I, I wish that the LGBT community could become more like that as well, where you have straight people supporting you and people just standing by you because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you are whether you have a God or you don't have a God, or whether you are wanting to have a relationship with a same-sex or an opposite-sex person. At the end of the day, it all comes down to good people versus the bad people, if you want to put it so simply. And that all the good guys have to stick together. And the, the evil guys will stick together. All our evil dictator presidents are all in bed together uh, doing their cutting their deals and, and working together. And, you know, we have um, Ugandans fleeing uh, for their lives to Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya where they're being starved um, because there's cahoots going on between the two countries and that. So if they can join together for evil, I think that the good people, it's about time we started joining together and networking as good people and standing together for people in other countries um, who are not foreigners, they're our neighbours. And the true African way is you look after your neighbours, you look after your family, you look after your neighbours, and when your neighbours and everyone are looked after you, you look after the neighbours next door or the next village, and that's what we need to start seeing with everything. Everyone has a role to play, and nobody has the right to judge another person. You can judge another person if they are committing a crime and they are doing wrong. But to judge a person just for not having a God or for not being, um, not lo loving a, a, the same per kind of sex person that you do, it's wrong. It's really, really wrong. Um, so, okay, I see there's a message there that's trying to fix us. That's fine. Okay. I also wanted to just bring up this recent... Um, Fatty, uh new thing that we're all going to be going crazy over is the monkeypox. Uh, now, monkeypox, they, for some reason, and I don't know if these reports are correct, as I say, I don't believe what I read. I study it for myself, and I don't know any medical doctors or people I can speak to or people I can connect with about the monkeypox right now, but um, there have been a couple of reports put out that monkeypox is more prevalent amongst um, gay men. Okay, I don't know whether that is... A fact or a fallacy so I'm not saying that it is I'm saying please think I'm just saying that whether it is fact because of some biological medical reason that's explained easily but I don't see how it would just be prevalent in men and not in women if it's both sexes that are getting it and why it would only be transmitted sexually through men and through women another way is that things like this, I'm worried if it becomes a thing like the COVID, that there's going to be even more discrimination against gay people, especially against gay men. And I'm just asking people to just take a step back, first of all. The whole monkeypox thing in itself, if you look into all the data, has been around in Africa for years and years and years. Uh, it's still prevalent in, in places in West Africa. Um, it's mostly transmitted by eating a certain kind of uh, bat or rat which is part of the diet in parts of West Africa, um, in small areas, in, um, and people who go into Amazon rainforests and things like that. Um, it's not contagious um, unless you pop the, the things that are on you and they, the fluid gets on you. It doesn't kill. The incidences of death are very low. And now there's a huge thing taking over really where they, we're starting to get all stirred up and fear put in us about monkeypox. We've all got to get vaccinated and everything. So I'm just saying to you, be cautious. As there are a lot of um, LGBTQIA people watching tonight or who will be watching the show afterwards. Um, the factual evidence, and I think maybe I should put an article on Facebook with links so people can actually reference that if they have issues with it. I'm just worried. I'm foreseeing that it's going to also be another little um, sort of nail in the coffin of LGBT that people try and put in there is that they're now going to bring this whole monkeypox into the thing is why it's wrong to be gay the thing and it's not um, that's something that I was worried about and I also just touched I wanted to mention that because it's in our news at the moment um, 
and to be very careful about what we read in the media. And for those of us who are writers, who do have a platform, bloggers, um, activists, uh, people, even if you've just got an audience with your local community, let's start writing articles um, and talking when we have other topics that we are researching as writers, um, get a gay person's opinion as well as, and, and say, this is a gay person, whatever. So people can start seeing that um, the gay people out there are not, that was the other thing I wanted to say, there's a stigma that they're these sleazy people hanging around in horrible places waiting for people that they can rape and children and toilets that they can molest and everything. It's not the case at all. Um, we have very well educated um, lawyers, professors, teachers. You have people like Beryl, who is in, incredible. I mean, and it's, you know, a lot of the, the gay people who who perhaps aren't doing well in their careers or can't have jobs, it, they, it's because they are gay that they are discriminated against and they don't have the same opportunities as a straight person has. Um, so we have to change our whole perspective of that as well, is that it's not um, gay people. They are not... Every gay man is not going to rape every straight man. And... Every lesbian woman is not going to come on to a, a straight woman. Um, you're not going to become gay by being around people in your community who are gay. Just like you're never going to stop people from being gay um, through no amount of prayer or reading the Bible, through no amount of um, conversion therapy or any of this nonsense, or by rape. Um, there's this... this that is just an excuse to rape. People who say that um, a sexual orientation can be corrected by rape are rapists and they are just masquerading under that umbrella of, of performing some kind of procedure that's going to make someone straight again. Um, they are rapists and those that kill the people, they are killers. It's the same as I see in Nigeria, people beheading innocent people in the streets and, and gunning people down in churches and they are allowed to get away with it because it is according to their religious beliefs. Um, it is okay because um, they are allowed to kill. They are masquerading under the umbrella of religion and giving a very bad name to a lot of very good Muslim people who are not all terrorists. And now all Muslim people are getting branded as terrorists and they aren't. There are some wonderful, upstanding, incredible members, Christian and Muslim members of in our communities that are doing great work the only thing that stands between them and people like me um, who are godless is their god and they are all humanists with wonderful hearts and they are wonderful people my own mother was one of them her whole life she was a devoted christian uh, if i couldn't change my own mother's viewpoints um who knew me better than anybody else and loved me for everything i was and always encouraged me in everything i did in life I couldn't, I, I've taken her to incredible sites, State Fontaine Caves in South Africa and um, Aldvai Gorge in um, Tanzania. She couldn't even see from evolutionary evidence. She still thought there was something planted, something about the devil. She can't explain it. God will explain it all one day. We can't question him kind of thing. You must understand there's a lot of people who will never accept gay people, just as there are a lot of people that will never accept the non-religious people. And we just have to accept that we can't change everybody. Leave them be, they don't want to understand us. Uh, and rather mix in the circles of people who do understand you. And, and conserve your energy. Don't waste your energy trying to speak endlessly to someone and prove yourself to them as a gay person or as a godless person. Rather focus on good positive groups and people. Um, that will feed you and nourish your, your, your sense of being and, and build you and make you a better person because the more like-minded, positive, good people you surround yourself with in this world and in Africa especially, um, the stronger we get and the further we can go and the more things we can achieve. So um, that is it from, from me for now. I think I've, I've covered pretty much everything. Um, there were a couple of topics and things I wanted to go through with Beryl. Um, Kato, I don't know whether you would like to come on now as my guest. Well, not as my guest, but if you just wanted to join me in saying um, goodbye, good night to everybody. Um, and we...
can talk about next week's show we're going to be also covering. It will be the last in our series on homosexuality. Um, Kato has written a lot of books um, and he has, has covered the subject as well and there are new books in the pipeline and books about humanism um, and just written from an African perspective. They are also available as ebooks. Um, so please um, make contact if you uh, would like to read his books. They are also on Amazon.com. Her call to activism. Goodbye. Okay. Um, so that I think Akata also has had a few uh, connection issues and things. The, the internet, should I dare to say the internet gods are against us? <laughs> if they are such, there's no such thing, but I'm just saying. Um, so um, I'll be ending off tonight. Please send us your messages. There is a WhatsApp number on the Facebook page as well. Uh, drop a comment after this. We do go back and read all the comments. Well, Kato has been doing that because I've been so busy, but I will go back eventually through all the previous comments and posts and messages on our group, on our Facebook group. Um, about a topic you perhaps would like us to cover in the future. Uh, if you'd like us, uh, maybe as we get more viewers, there will be more things that you'd like to talk about to do. Uh, and you've with LGBT especially if there's things taking place in your countries that we know nothing about. Drop us a line, let us know about what you'd like us to cover. If you've got someone in your country who you feel would love to be on the show and, and give us your input and perspective of what's going on where you are, please let us know. We are open to every person and we would love to have like-minded people joining us to discuss all the very important topics that we need to face as African people. Um, so I just guess in ending, I want to say thank you to all of you who join us and those of you who watch and for sharing and for the incredible uh, feedback we've had uh, on a very touchy subject for most people in Africa. And we, we have such a huge viewership and so much. The message of support in that behind the scenes. We thank you. Um, and I guess I'll just end off by saying um, it's um, sorry that my co-host, Kazel, was not with us tonight. Um, due, I had technical issues last week, so he did the show, so I said I'd do this one. Um, we're going to be doing the pre-recording in future. I must say, though, that um, there will be one Saturday in September where I won't be doing the show if we are going to carry on filming on a Saturday and recording because I am standing with fellow uh, Ugandans in South Africa. We are going to an event where um, President Bobby Wine, the elected president, and not the military dictator that's taken over and refuses to get out of power in Musveni, but President Bobby Wine is going to be in my city, in South Africa, and we are going, as a VIP guest, and we are going to be going to support him there, and that will be my whole Saturday and Saturday night. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I'll be able to do a bit of a live feed from there, we're going to be waving the Ugandan flag and we are going to be raising awareness for the genocide, the ongoing genocide of the Ugandan people um, that, that everybody is denying, but it's actually uh, very real and very scary. Yesterday we celebrated the anniversary of the end of the Rwandan genocide. I never thought I'd live through another genocide, know of another genocide. Um, but the truth is there's genocides happening in all of our countries at the moment. It's not just in Uganda, Nigeria is another country. So I just wanted to say to you as I finish off, stand strong. Know that you are privileged and honoured to have been born on the most incredible, amazing continent in the world and that we, African people, are the most amazing, incredible people. We are not the poverty-stricken, downtrodden, unintelligent, not as good as people that we are made out to be. We are far more than that. We've always been. That's why so much of who we are has been suppressed and hidden. Um, we are finding ourselves back now to reclaim our rightful place back in this world and to put things right. And please don't ever forget that. Um, those of you I know, you battle with everything like even data and, and having enough electricity on your phone battery electricity to charge your phones to watch shows like this um, and to have enough money for the data. Your children and your grandchildren are not destined to a life of poverty and despair and war in Africa. Um, that is not who, that is not our ending. 
for our people and we need to stand together. Don't ever forget, don't ever give up, don't ever be despondent and all these people running off to Saudi Arabia and overseas, please don't become slaves of the 20, 20, 2022 year, 2022. Please, please be careful because there's a lot happening. There's someone today who wants to go to Saudi Arabia. Please be careful that we are not just being becoming slaves to the West and the East again. It's hard in Africa. We need to stick it out. The good people need to stay here and stand together, unified as one Africa. And never forget that you're an African. It's everything to be proud of and to be privileged of and to just love your continent and love your people and never be ashamed of who you are. Never think that you are less worthy or less of a person because of the color of your skin or because of the continent that you were born on. You're all amazing. We are all amazing people. And I guess on that note, I will say good night and lots of love to you all from a Zimbabwean in South Africa on behalf of my Ugandan co-host, Katu. Uh, and we'll see you all at the same time next week. Thanks so much. And Beryl, we will definitely make a plan to hook up with you in, in Kenya. And thank you to all of you for watching uh, from around Africa tonight. Good night.